This is a review of 2014 in light of Bible prophecy. Another Gentile year has come and gone, and the Lord Jesus Christ has not yet returned. During 2014, it certainly feels like world events that connect to the Bible, prophecy, have intensified, and at the end of the year, geopolitics have been left in a state of unease and tenseness. The signs of the times are slowly coming into focus and give us indications like never before that soon the Lord will be here. We know that God has a purpose and it is with the earth. We are told, for example, that all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh. In Numbers chapter 14 and verse 21, the Lord Jesus Christ taught his followers to pray the Lord's Prayer. For thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Having a part in that coming is the very essence of the truth of the hope contained within the Bible. Acts chapter 8 verse 12. The gospel message shows how that men and women can have their sins forgiven and become acceptable to God through the work of Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 to 29 and so the Bible teaches us that Jesus will soon return to sit on the throne of his father David in Jerusalem Luke chapter 1 verse 32 and Acts chapter 1 verse 11 we read of how when he does return he will conduct a resurrection of those who are responsible and accountable and a judgment will be conducted Romans chapter 14 verse 10 1st of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16, the 1st of Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. The mechanism for acceptance is based on a firm belief in the gospel and then the demonstration of this belief in baptism and a life of humble service. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Ephesians 1 verse 13, James chapter 2 verse 20 to 26, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 and Mark chapter 16 verse 16. Those who are acceptable will live and reign with him for a thousand years in his kingdom when the earth will be filled with the peace and righteousness that God has promised. Revelation chapter 20 verse 16, Psalm 72 verse 2 and Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. After this, all will be given up to the glory of God. 1, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 28. The Bible gives us a clear vision of what the world will look like just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. The prophecies of Revelation chapter 16 verses 12 to 16, Ezekiel 38, Daniel 11, Joel 3 and Zechariah 14 all harmonise to tell us of the uniting of nations to battle against Israel. The ancient names are given for the territories of Russia, Iran, northern Africa and Europe as being the aggressors under the leadership of a character called Gog, Ezekiel 38 verses 1 to 9. We read of how a few nations are not part of this invasion, those associated with Britain, Tarshish and the Gulf states, Ezekiel 38 verse 13. This week we would briefly like to review the key themes in, this, in the news stories which we have picked up on during the year to show how that the world is indeed on the brink of the crisis foretold in the Bible and that it will not be long now before Christ returns. Let us consider the rise of the Russian aggressor. It has indeed been a busy year and Russia has not been far away from the headlines each month. A ruthless and aggressive Russia has once again flexed its muscles. Its military spending has again increased. This year we witnessed the annexation of Crimea on the 21st of March and the increased aggression by Russia on eastern Ukraine. One commentator re recently wrote that, on, that in 2014 great Russian chauvinism returned with a vengeance. So why has Russia been so aggressive to those in Ukraine? Because they started to look west, to the EU, for support rather than to east and to Russia. The rest of the world looked on helplessly as Russia took over and sponsored the unrest against the Ukraine government. President Putin was recorded to have breathed out all sorts of threats. For example, 
On the 2nd of September 2014 this year, a headline in The Guardian read, Putin claims Russian forces could conquer Ukraine capital in two weeks. On the 29th of August, The Telegraph had a headline, Vladimir Putin, don't mess with a nuclear-armed Russia. The aggressive, arrogant, totalitarian-style regime is exactly what we expect to eventually be embodied in Gog, the one who will lead Russia and its allies into conflict with Israel according to Bible prophecy. Although it is unclear whether Putin himself will be this one, he is certainly setting the precedent. In reaction to this aggression, and in particular because of an event in July where a civil jetliner was shot down over the territory held by pro-Russian rebels, the West made economic sanctions against Russia. These, along with the slack in the demand for oil, have caused the Russian economy to crash in the latter quarter of the year. Putin, although still a popular leader in Russia, will have to take drastic steps if he is to remain unchallenged. As if nothing is done, commentators are warning that real damage will be done to the average person's living standards in Russia. One way of increasing the value of Russian oil is to begin a war. Some astounding headlines were published last week suggesting Russia is considering just that, starting a war with none other than the Israelis. Under a headline of Official, Russia Pl Official Russian Plotting to Start War on Israel. American news network WND on the 20th of December reported Russia is preparing a contingency plan to prompt Hezbollah and possibly the regimes of Syrian President Bashir al-Assad into a direct military conflict with Israel, according to a French official who has been apprised of the situation. Another headline on the same story was published by the International Business Times. Russia plans war on Israel. Moscow to push Hezbollah. Assad regime into direct confrontation. These are staggering headlines which show that there is no love lost between Russia and Israel and that conflict could be on the horizon. Therefore, as we enter 2015, 2015, we are poised on the brink of Russian crisis which could bring about a war in 2015. How this may develop, we are unsure, but it is possible that the sparks of the conflict could soon ignite the great battle of Armageddon, which will soon engulf the Middle East before Christ returns to save God's people of Israel. The Islamic State and the Latter-day Syrian This year, the Syrian civil war got worse. According to the BBC, there are now apparently 3.2 million refugees from the conflict, the vacuum created by the war and the failure of Iraq to produce a government which represented all aspects of its society allowed for the rise of ISIS earlier this year. The Islamic State are extremely Sunni Muslim, seeking to establish a caliphate where Shia law is used to govern the territories it rules. The group are ruthless and bloodthirsty, and in the news it was full of horror the horror of beheadings and terrorist messages that ISIS conducted. ISIS are of interest to us because they now hold the current territory of ancient Assyria. In Micah chapter 5 there is a prophecy about our times, the time when Israel returns to their land. During this time we read in Micah chapter 5 of an invading force, the same force as that of Gog in Ezekiel 38. In Micah chapter 5, this, fall, this force is called Assyria. Go then, it seems, must conquer the area of currently controlled by ISIS. It is possible that the latter-day prophecy in Numbers 24 relates to this. In Numbers 24, verse 23 and 24, we read of an invading force which comes with ships to afflict Israel, Eber. We are also told the force shall afflict Asher or Assyria. Piercing, the, piercing these prophecies together then, it seems that there is a possibility of a hint in the Bible of the Gogian Confederacy coming down to attack Isis and to take over its territory so that Gog becomes the latter-day Assyrian. To see the rise of an aggressive power in the area of ancient Assyria then is of great interest to us as we watch the signs of the times. 
This year we have seen headlines about the aggression that ISIS has towards Russia. For example, on the 3rd of September, the International Business Times had a headline, ISIS tells Vladimir Putin, we are coming to Russia, to free Chechnya. The Independent had a headline of a similar, similar nature on the 10th of October. Chechen ISIS fighters under Omar al-Shishani threatened to take fight to Putin. If Russia did decide to swarm down and take ISIS in the West, the West would support such a move and possibly even lend a hand producing the union of the nations we might expect from Ezekiel 38. However things might pan out, one thing However things might pan out, one thing is for sure, and that is how volatile the Middle East is at this time as we end 2014. With so much happening in just a year in the region, we wonder what the situation might look like at the end of next year. European Integration we now turn our attention to Europe. Europe is still reeling from the international economic crash that has triggered more calls for not only a more robust monetary union but also for a political union to underpin it. This uniting of the nations of Europe is of course what the Bible students expect. The western side of the Roman Empire is described in both Daniel and Revelation as a beast. In Revelation 17 we read of how this beast revives in the time just before Christ returns and that the kings of the earth shall receive their power and strength sorry shall give their power and strength unto the beast revelation 17 and verse 13 it is this that we see occurring in europe today on the beast of revelation 17 is a harlot woman a symbol of a religious community who have not been faithful to god's true ways to sit on something in symbol is to control and direct it. It is therefore of note that this year, on the 25th of November, the leader of the religious community of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, addressed the European Union. His humanistic message was a unity and therefore all was therefore all to see, and he sought to guide the beast through the leader's he, dre he addressed. Tarshish and the trade in the Gulf states. In Ezekiel 38 we note that the Tarshish power of Britain, however, are not allied with the Russian, Eastern, African and European invaders. This indicates that Britain will not be part of any European Union which involves armies. They are independent and are to be found in the same at the same time leading up to Christ's return trading in the area of the Gulf because the prophet records that there are there with Sheba and Dedan ancient names for the area of the Gulf. It is very interesting to therefore note that this year has again seen Britain taking steps to back out of Europe. The rise of the United Kingdom Independence Party and its charismatic leader Nigel Farage have been unprecedented this year the party has taken Westminster seats and has now two members of Parliament. It has one key policy, to leave the European Union and this has to be gaining support across Britain. The popularity of this has put pressure on the main political parties with the Conservatives promising a referendum in 2015. David Cameron, the Conservative British Prime Minister, has promised the British people he will renegotiate Britain's posi position in Europe and will put this to the British people before the referendum. By all accounts, any negotiations seem to have failed thus far, causing some distress. We've witnessed headlines such as, Britain will not remain in Europe, come what may, David Cameron says, the Telegraph on the 10th of November, and David Cameron, I'm ready to leave Britain out of Europe if migrant reforms fail. In the Telegraph, the 27th of November this year. With an exit now really possible, Britain is now looking elsewhere to trade its wares. Significantly, it is forced on ramping up trade with the Gulf states. In March, we had reported from the government that the Trade Minister brings UK business delegation to the Gulf. Later in the year, we had UK trade envoy to Saudi Arabia. Kingdom's economy has huge potential outside oil sector. 
That was on the 1st of December. Then early in December, the news came that Britain returns east of Suez with permanent Royal Navy base in the Gulf. Telegraph on the 6th of December. It's easy to see then how this year the, the formation of the nations in accordance to the Bible prophecy is well on track. The wealth of Israel and her controversy with the nations. We finally now turn our attention on events in Israel this past year. The big story here was the breakdown in peace talks of the war in Gaza which was sparked by the murder of three Israeli teenagers and the increased launches of rockets from the Gaza Strip. On the 8th of July, Israel launched Operation Protective Edge, a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip in which the IDF destroyed a sophisticated network of military tunnels which were going to be used by the terrorist organization Hamas to invade Israel. As usual, the Western media reported in a biased way against Israel, emphasizing that the Palestinian casualties and destruction and painting Israel as the aggressor in the conflict despite the rockets which had been raining down on Israel's civilian population. Now, although the tensions are still obviously present and conflict has now died down, however the presence of a hostile force on the coast of Israel is to be expected by Bible students. In Joel chapter 3, as part of a prophecy of a great invasion of Israel, additional supporting nations are given a special condemnation in verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Tyre and Zidon are both to the north of Israel in modern-day Lebanon, where Hezbollah currently operates. The coasts of Palestine clearly relate to the Gaza Strip, and the area Hamas controls. The fact that God has brought Israel back into their land and that they are hostile nations left in these areas show the power and foresight of the Almighty. We are told in Ezekiel chapter 38 why the invasion takes place. In verse 12 we read that Go comes from the people and to take a spoil. Therefore we would expect to see international hatred of the Jews in Israel and also for Israel to become wealthy. These two things have indeed been in the news this year. Now in terms of the wealth of Israel, it has increased across the board with reports of its economy growing faster than many developed nations this year. In January, the Pipeline and Gas Journal reported Israel on the cusp of an energy revolution. There are reports that Israel possessed the second largest deposits of oil shale in the world outside the United States. Significantly, Israel is now exporting gas, which is expected to bring an influx of economic growth. One amazing report was that, again, a huge gas field has been found. Haaretz had this headline on the 14th of December. Major new gas find off Israel, Israel's Mediterranean coast. The new field has been called Royi, and it is thought that it will be the third large, largest of the recent finds off the coast of Israel. Indeed, the wealth of Israel is set to increase, as we would expect from Bible prophecy. In terms of the hatred of Israel, this has indeed increased. The war in Gaza exposed a huge hatred in Israel, and the West boycotts Israel's products with a huge rise in attacks. In July, the magazine Newsweek had a picture on its front cover of a Jewish holding a suitcase. The headlines read, Exodus, why Europe's Jews are fleeing once again. The article within reported on an event in Paris. The mob howled for vengeance, the missiles raining down on the synagogue walls of the worshippers huddled inside. It was a scene from Europe in the, in the 1930s, except this was eastern Paris on the eve of July the 13th, 2014. Thousands had gathered to demonstrate against the Israeli bombardment of Gaza, but the protests soon turned violent, and against Jews in general. One of those trapped told Israeli television that the streets outside were like the Intifada, the Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation. This is typical of increased hatred faced by the Jews in Europe this year. Inside Israel, increased attacks by Palestinians upon Israelis were looked on with indifference by the Western media. 
in November when two Palestinians broke into a synagogue with axes and hacked to death four Jews at prayer. One headline from CBN News read, Jerusalem police fatally shoot two after apparent synagogue attack. The reporting is obviously anti-Israel with the focus again putting Jews as the aggressor. The controversy of the building of Israel settlements on the West Bank has continued to cause international outrage. In September, The Guardian had a headline, Huge new Israeli settlement in West Bank condemned by US and UK, the 1st of September. Also in September, The Telegraph reported, Five EU nations complain to Israel over land grab, The Telegraph, 11th of September. So the scene is being set for the great conflict revealed by the prophets to take place. So let's bring our thoughts to a conclusion. So, there ends our review. The world is indeed on the edge of crisis. The sign that Christ is at the door have intensified. What will next year hold? Will it be more of the same or will it be the year so longed for for the return of Christ from heaven? The important thing must surely be our reaction to these things in the midst of an apathetic and ignorant society. The exhortation of the Lord Jesus is most relevant for us to be reminded of. Behold, he says, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Revelation 16 verse 15. We shall end this year's last Bible in the News with passages from the prophecy of Zechariah, passages which prove that God's purpose is with the earth, that after the great battle of the nations, God's kingdom will be established on the earth. Zechariah chapter 14, commencing at verse 8. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In in summer and in winter shall it be, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feasts of tabernacles. How we long for that day. How indeed we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you.